Hi, my name is Karis Park, and today I'm going to go over with you how to find all possible rational zeros. So to start off, there's going to be a P and a Q. Um, the P is the factor of a constant term, and the Q is going to be a f the factor of a leading coefficient. So we'll go over um, P over Q later, but if we look at this example, we can see that uh, the p is going to be negative 16 because, as I said here, the p is the factor of a constant term. Constant is when there is no variable next to the, ter uh, to the number. And the q will be 3 because it says the q will be um, the factor of a leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is always the variable. It doesn't have to be x, but if it was x, it would be the variable with the highest exponent. So as you can see here, it's 3, and this is 2, and this is 1, and there's no variable here so this is a leading coefficient three so um i just wrote down whatever i just said here and you would find the factors of each um, of these two numbers so when you find the factors you get one two four eight sixteen and you would just do plus and minus it's just a rule so you would do the exact same thing with three so the two factors of three are one and three so now as i said here it's going to be always p over q so you would do exactly what I just said. You would put each P over each Q. So if we look here, um, the first one is 1. So we would do this over that. And then we got 2. And then it would be this over that. 4 would be this over that. And then I would just keep going. Now when I get here, so 1 third, it would be P over Q. So P over Q. And then 2 thirds, that, that, and that. So this is what I just wrote down for every single one of the P over Qs. Alright, so now the next question is then find one root of f of x, f of x, um, by plugging in rational roots into f of x until you find it to be um, the root. So the root is going to be when f of x equals zero. So you're just going to plug in random numbers from all possible rational roots. So when we say it's possible, it doesn't mean that it is a rational root. So we would just plug in random numbers, as I just said. So I started off with negative 1. So when I plugged negative 1 in, I did the math and I plugged negative 1 into x and I got 5. So since that doesn't equal 0, it's not a root. So you would have to keep trying. So I did another numerical value from the list of possible rational roots that I found and I put in negative 2. So when I put in negative 2, I actually got 0, which is a good sign because that means that it is a root. So when the next question is asking you to find all, all rational roots of f of x, you don't want to keep on um, putting in each of these values into f of x because that would just take a long time until you find 0 for each one of them. So instead, what you would do is you would... Um, so you would use synthetic division. So since x of negative 2 um, is a root, we would use synthetic division. So since negative 2, so we would put it uh, out there, and then you would use synthetic division, and you would just put in, so as you can see from f of x here, it would be 3, and then negative 4, negative 28, negative 16. So 3, negative 4, negative 28, negative 16, and you just carry out synthetic division. So what you would do is you bring this down, 3, and then you multiply these two, get negative 6, and then you uh, add these two, so it's negative 10, multiply, uh, you get 20, and then you add negative 8, and then you just keep going, and then you get 0 at the end. So you are always going to get a 0 at the end because, as we stated before, negative 2 is a factor, meaning that we would not get a uh, remainder. So if we go down, we would, um, sorry, we would get these, and we would just make it into this, right? And then this can be factored. So when you factor it, you get this and then this. So these are all the steps that I'm just showing, but you get this. So you would just set this equal to zero because when you set it equal to zero, that's how you find the roots. And yeah, you would solve for x and you would get this and this. And also don't forget that negative two is also a rational root because we used that value to find the other roots. Um, so there should be three roots because the highest exponent of f of x is three. So as you can see here, um, the highest exponent is 3, meaning that it crosses the, um, the x-axis three times. Thank you for watching.